Just a case of finishing off now today. Uh, uh, let me think. What, 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 what we call boxing brings people, doesn't it, together? Uh, I can explain it. My friend Derek says to me, "Why don't you go to Denny Sobson shows?" This was uh, March, April time, 2015, I said, well, I don't really know him. He said, well, I used to train his dad's greyhounds in 1970. And he gave me a Ford, I don't know, Ford Estate, some a Ford Cortina Estate or something, about a year old, and under a pound a week to look after greyhounds up here at, El up here at Ellaby. And I said, oh yeah. So I went to meet, obviously, Dennis's dad. To sort of like get to know Dennis that way. And I ended up getting on with them, didn't I? I think I mentioned this before on the channel. When we were talking, and I think he said, to, I said to him something like, this is your about 49th or 50th show or something. And he went, I do know that. So I'm making my business to know. We got chatting and he said, I'll give you a chance. Now, then he turned to me and spoiled his scent. He turned to me and looked me in the eye and he said, but if you ever F-U-C-K me, you know, there'll be problems. And I thought, I went home that night and I thought, spoiled his scent saying that to me. But it was a good night. She fought a guy that night, 12 and 12. That's the first time I met Dennis. That was the day my dog was born, Rocky. The day my dog was born was the day I met Dan. Obviously I've seen him years ago at shows and stuff. He always had Clinton Woods in tow, didn't he? Uh, a bit like Frank Warren used to go to shows, didn't he, with Joe Bugner in tow. But uh, it made ever sense about a few fallouts. But boxing brings people together like that. And through that I've met some good people. Chris Smedley, Mick Whale, Josh Whale. Uh, Clinton Woods, Glyn Rhodes, Sam Sheedy, Liam Cameron, become good friends with all them. Uh, good friends with Glyn and Chris, Madley, Glyn Rhodes, good friends with them. Good friends with Clinton, even though him and Dennis have, you know, had it. They're not like they were, but I like them both, don't I? But it's one of the things, isn't it? People fall out, don't they? Or have disagreements. Uh, but boxing generally brings people together. It's good for young kids, isn't it? To get weight off and have some discipline. If you look at the kids' lives that have been turned around over to Mick Wales' gym in Mexborough, Mick Wales took on Steffi Bull's old gym. And they've turned kids' lives around to such an extent that the parents get emotionally upset because the kids are doing really well. Uh, I think it's all good. I think it's really, really good, and I wish that politicians could. I wish, I wish politicians could, could see. I wish politicians could see what boxing does to them. There's too many people who want to set up boxing gyms and get funding and then just abuse it. They spoil it for the rest of them who do want to get funding now. If you've got 10 naughty kids in Max for terrorising streets at night with antisocial behaviour, if if them 10 kids join Mick Wales' gym, I guarantee you, seven of them kids won't be terrorising that area again. But it's the politician you've got to convince, isn't it? People in the boxing industry now. Eddie Earn, to be fair to Eddie Earn and his dad, they've made big points about this. I'm always making big points about this as well when I see politicians. When Caroline Flint sees me, she about turns. Because I used to go up to her surgery in Cunningsborough on an evening once a week. She turns round and goes, 
Let me tell you. <gasps> Porky's here. When them British Boxing Board of Control lot see me, I want to pull them about MRI scans in gyms. When people have been sparring in Mick Wales gym on an afternoon or evening, they should have an MRI scan straight away after. Even a fighter who wins a fight should have one. But where's it? who's going to pay for it? They should have... They should have... Uh, they, should, they should have them in every gym. They should also have pensions for fighters, but... But, we're going up, but that's another story, but we're going off key here. Boxing brings people together. There's other people I've met through boxing. Uh, Frotch. Frotch through uh, uh, a forum years ago. Years ago, donkeys, before he won British title. Uh, 15 years ago. I don't know Carl. I know Carl before he fought Robin Reed. The British champion, I think, I met Carl. First time I spoke to Carl Frotch, he beat Damon A in a first round knockout and bladdered him. Bladdered him. Remember that, 04? Might have been 04, 05, that's how I've known him since then. Actual speaking to him on the telephone since a, a meeting, um, I've been to his house and that. I've met him in person since 06, 07, maybe 07. So, through boxing, there's, uh, and he hasn't changed much. There's other people I've met, I've had uh, Steve Bunce, you've got him on a picture somewhere. He's a great person, Steve Bunce came up for Dennis's dad's celebration of his life and we had a good night. He's a great guy, he's Rico and Terry who are close friends of mine and we're working on stuff in, behind the scenes with Dennis. They've met, I've met them through boxing, there's other people who follow this channel, there's some people I've met, some I haven't met, some that I've kept in touch with, and they're my peers, I class as my peers, whereas my own friends who I've grown up with, a lot of my friends are, are either dead or in prison or uh, drug addicts, basically how, what I were, I were a drug addict, you don't have to be a drug addict, to, it's a harsh word isn't it, drug addict, but you don't have to be a drug addict. To be, you don't have to be scruffy and a down and out to be a drug addict. I've always had a car since I was a teenager. I've always had a few quid, but that doesn't mean that you can't be a drug addict. I've had a solicitor years ago who had an Edwin problem. We used to get talk about the same things all the time, but uh, which is not good, like, but but. Uh, Boxing brings people together and I think me getting barging my way in, however the way I've done it, because I'm pretty loud and brash aren't I, I did it because I had to hold on to something, otherwise I was just going to go off at rails. A lot of people don't know this but I were involved with, with, uh, with some bit, sort of kind of business we could say and I took my money out of that business and I moved away. I only moved 20 miles and I went and rented a penthouse. It's a true story. I rented a penthouse in Orkley. Brook Court, Orkley, smack opposite the A-Field Comprehensive. Um, all I had was my methadone every day and nobody else knew where I lived. And I had a few quid at the time but I was fat. I was were getting fatter by the day. I think I spoke about this, didn't I? I was getting fatter by the day. Um, I kept saying to my doctor, I uh, said, oh, doc, I'm not being funny, but, you know, I'm normally about 13 and a half stone, 14 stone max. But I'm uh, 17 stone. Oh, you'll settle down on medication. So, okay. I went back months later. So I'm 20, 20 stone. <laughs> she goes, all oh, right, well, you'll settle down on it. I said, okay. Then I went back at 22 stone, 24, and it, we got to 28 stone, and we thought, we've got a problem here. Your body weight's doubled. I'd had a reaction from the methadone. Now, that's uh, pretty harsh to take, you know, when you can't get up in the morning out of bed, just blown up. 
Well, when you're that fat, you just pick up your phone, don't you? People come and drop your car off, but I had a BMW coupe at the time and I used to fill it. <laughs> I used to get in it and fill it. I'm glad it were automatic because if it had been a manual, I'd have been, I'd have been too knackered to drive it. I couldn't walk to the shop. I went to a Liverpool versus Stoke game, and, and in Liverpool you have to park near ground, and you charge pe people charge not only twenty quid to park. And I had to walk up this like hill to Anfield, and I'm stopping on way, and I'm going. <sighs> and this is the first time I'd been out in months, so I was just laying in bed all day on the internet. Boxing forums and that. This is before. I think Twitter had just come out then, but I want. I didn't really bother with Twitter till about 2013. But looking back now, I've come a long way, I know. Obviously, my body weight. What am I? Two, I think I'm 220. About 220 my weight. Something like that. It fluctuates. Seem to have hit a wall. Uh, so to go from 392 down to about 222, 92, it was 170 pound, didn't it? 170 pound over April 2013, paid seven grand for an op at the Claremont up here, Dr. Roger Ackroyd. And I remember him talking to me before operation, telling me about his yacht. Because I were a bit scared of needles and that guy just grabbed me hand and went, boom! with needle and I, went, I remember drifting off thinking about this shot. I walk up and this big Hungarian woman, she lifted me off at bed. I thought, she's strong, she just lifted me like that. Tipped me over and my pal Gibbo come and pick me up next morning. He dropped me off, come and pick me up. I had to wear stockings for 10 days. I had like plasters here with stitches there because you have like drainage parts, don't you? But yeah, it's a long time ago now, it's six years, six year, four months. So six year, four months is 76 months, 170 pound in 76 months. So you could say technically two pound a month, couldn't you? Two pound a month. Half a pound a week I've lost for over six year. Even it out. I've got no loose skin or anything, so I've been fortunate, haven't I? But the person who were there having an operation with me, you were the same height as me and same weight. He lost his in a year and he's since been back and they, they took a, another six or seven thousand off him. I think, he, I think he had a different op to me. His were a bit cheaper. But they took a bit more. I think he might have took eight grand off him or something for all skin to be cut off or something. So I couldn't have that. But this is what happens, you see, when you mess with drugs. You think you're clever messing with drugs and you get your fingers burnt. It's the man upstairs saying, that's wrong what you've done or what you've been doing and correcting yourself. All you people out there, you can say boxing. Through You, you watched my channel through boxing and it gave you some, go, go, some good advice to, to mess about with class A drugs and you get your fingers burnt, trust me. And obviously, I've never had a problem with cocaine, but I have took cocaine in the past, which I spoke about. I took crack cocaine, I used to smoke crack cocaine on a slate. And they used to come and see me two days later after a heavy session. And give me my invoice, and I'd be like, how much? So while they're sat feeding you all night, you don't see, do you? And I've lost cars, jewellery, watches, all sorts, because of crack cocaine. That's a very dangerous trip as well, but like I said, I've tried everything, acid, weed, fat, fat not done out for me, makes me clean house, scrubbed up, skating, not skating boards, all, it's them plastic things I had years ago, first time I had fat, I had a Ford Orion gear, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning I scrubbed it all and all skin were coming off my fingers, cleaning it. I cleaned the carpet and I just cleaned this car so much I was at it on the Sunday. Started it on the Friday night, I was still cleaning on the Sunday. And uh, it, it was mint. <laughs> Look, mint, it's amazing what you can do if you clean a car, but drugs are for mugs. Only thing I've never had is magic mushrooms. I had acid, I thought I didn't like that. I kept looking at fireplace, I thought ants were crawling all over, but all them people out there that are looking at me thinking, now nah, what a prick. Yeah, what a prick. But the people who gave me drugs as well, you think they're, they're your mates, they're not your mates. 
they come across as mates and it's all exciting but it isn't. it's not exciting at all it's I don't know I don't know what it is when you're in prison if you've never had drugs in your life and you don't mix in with people who are smoking weed you can feel intimidated about that I felt like that when I was in my early 20s people smoking weed and I didn't want to know until somebody said to me are you wired up I said what do you mean wired up I don't take anything they said no you're not wired for sound are you I said wired for sound what are you on about they actually thought I was wired up and their own paranoia and that's how I ended up smoking weed because I got paranoid in Wald's prison I said well we think you're a grass I went what what give me that bottle bong here that's how I ended up but I felt it got me down my head down at night and I were on my hand well over 18 months on that charge and I think after a year I just couldn't sleep thinking about a trial date and the weed got, helped me get to sleep at night that's how I ended up taking weed and then when I got out 97 March after being locked up for 43 months consecutive somebody gave me cocaine first time I ever took cocaine he put it there to me on a key and I went and I blew it all over the place and he went no you're supposed to inhale it I went oh sorry he did it again and I blew it all over then he goes right last time and I went and I, and I, don't, I don't know what all big secret thing what with, with that I don't I don't get that I don't get it the coca cocaine people come to your house and they go shh let's go upstairs into the toilets Ross so you find you're in your toilet in your own I said what am I doing here in my toilet in my own house there's nobody in the house why are we whispering and why are we in the toilet so do you know what I mean that's a battle I try and swerve people going out because it's full of it isn't it boxing shows full of it uh, local pubs is full of it that were in the days in 97 when I had cocaine when people went do you fancy a line and it were pretty or shush now I went to, I went somewhere the other night it, Fox and Hound at Eckington they're chopping it on the table chopping it on the table like it's an out oh it's a bit of coke it's, it's alright Porky it's just a bit of coke I'm like Jesus but that's how drugs has gone but heroin ruins lives ruins lives and before you know where you are you're having to do things to keep your habit and you get an habit 150 a day if you've got a scrap metal around you've still got your habit to pay haven't you so you're going to work for nothing it's counterproductive but you have to you learn you can learn by these mistakes all you people out there who's having a little dabble just try and keep it at that if you can because them little dabbles, oh, I mean, you have it on a Saturday porky, I, 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 it do not work like that because then you have it on a Friday and Saturday, you might go out one week on a Friday and end up taking it Saturday, then it's a Friday and a Saturday, then a Sunday dinner, then it's a Friday, a Saturday and a Sunday dinner and a cheeky Monday afternoon, then before you know where you are, it's every day and then it's got you, so, but luckily, I've, I haven't been on methadone for years. Uh, I ended up on Subitex. So I got kicked off my script to buy Subitex on the street. On the uh, street, I'm trying to get a proper script now. I've got to get clean negatives, which I am doing. But there you go. Well, boxing probably saved my life from a life of misery of drugs, or I don't know. I've got mates. I've got mates that have been murdered. I've got uh, two seconds. Basically, uh, drugs are for mugs and boozers are cruisers and uh, I'm thinking about going on a mini cruise today so I've got to go over some, to Chesterfield in a minute and I'm going to go see my pal on the way back so I might go on a mini cruise just a little mini one though but it's what them mini cruisers uh, end up as isn't it they end up into like it ends up Southampton to New York on QE2, doesn't it? It ends up a big cruise, doesn't it? A mini cruise turns into a big cruise, so I don't know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see, but yeah, we're all looking for our frills, don't we? But looking for them frills can get your fingers burnt, whether it's with women, females, or whether it's with drugs. So we have to have discipline, don't we? So 
I think I'm probably going to start M1 on the way back from Chester Hill and come home. But boxing, like I've just said, boxing brings people together and uh, it's all good stuff. So I think it's time to pack up. It's nearly three o'clock. I'm going to get my. Uh, I'm getting my car de chrome in a few. In a, next week. Having it de-chromed. You know like them black edition, how did you get? Well, I don't like chrome now. I think I think if you've got chrome on your car, you're a dick. You're a dick. There's no worse than being a dick, is there? So I'm gonna have it de-chromed and took off and, and all matte black done where chrome is. And uh, a woman, oh yeah, that reminds me. A woman uh, in my car with a shopping trolley and uh, what can you do? It's uh, one of them things, isn't it? So I'm going to have to get that done as well now. Uh, it's 120 to do that, that, that uh, arch. It's only a gouge, isn't it? 120. Unbelievable, isn't it? How, how unlucky is that? Going to get some milk and end up with a 120 quid bill. So, alright, I forgot you. Yeah. Uh, so, peace out, keep on trucking. Don't forget to hit the like button for this video. I don't normally like to talk about drugs and that, but I feel that if people are going to follow me, they need to know a little bit about me. I'm not perfect by a long, sh by a long and short of it. Ten year in prison over a 12 year period. Not for no, don't you? Don't like that. It's just, it's not good, is it? If, you feel, I felt like I was in quicksand for years and I couldn't get out, but now look, I'm shining in light now. 15 year, 15 year, three month out of prison, apart from that 15 days that I did for that drink drive where I took a chase. That's another story. I took a chase in a Renault Laguna. Because I had twins at the time, so it were an estate. 2.2 turbo diesel, it was a nice car actually. I had it remapped. <laughs> We got chased, I got chased from Reindeer in at Epworth to, see if you google my name you'll see its story, it tells you its story doesn't it, but they, they always make it up don't they please, it's in Daily Mail, Reindeer in at uh, Epworth to Flare Path at Dunscroft, and if you go from, have you ever, anybody ever driven on A18 from Scunthorpe, the road bounces doesn't it, so I've got to pull out this car park, there's this cop car, parked in his farmyard and thought, is he waiting for me in? And he was obviously. He chased me. I remember bouncing down on this road thinking, God, I'll be lucky not to land in one of these ditches. But I thought, well, look, you know when you're off your head, you don't think, do you? We'll go to the flare path, we'll pull outside, and I'm going to run straight in pub and mingle in with everybody. That was a plan, but I got a rugby tackle getting out of the car. But, you know, you win some, you lose some, don't you? But, uh, but yeah, that's on Google if you look. But, uh, he beat me up in the back of the police car, the copper. I never laid a finger on him, he just kept bashing me. I've only just met you, I want to wring your neck! I'll never forget. <laughs> he had a big chain with an anchor on it, and he was twisting it round my neck. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, but like I said, boxing saved me, and... Anybody out there who's suffering from depression, and I've had all that depression, been down, and I've looked to take drugs to escape the things I've got going on, going on in my head, so the things I've seen over years, and so you take drug. I took drugs to escape from that, but the reality is the next day the problem's even worse. I think, I think so anyway. But all them people that were giving me it, I were a grown man. Obviously, I paid for other drugs, obviously, but. All the people that were giving to me, now that I've, I've woke up and I've seen the light, I, I don't really bother with them people now. I don't really bother with them. But, because, what are they? They're not only giving me and getting me an ad, but they're making money off me, aren't they? But you can't see it, can you, when you, because you want your fix, don't you? So, but, but it is what it is, so, let's sort this out now. Check uh, D re wrapping to get booked in, and then they've got to sort of date art to paint that arch. I want a tire as well. 
Running the cars, running cars in a family, it's not cheap. Keep on top of them because if you let little things go on your cars, before you know where you are, there's three jobs they want doing on mine. It'll be six, then nine, and then cars are wrecking it. So keep on top of them at all times. So peace out. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then you will get the video straight away. You'll get your porky fix. But I do apologise if I got a little bit deep today, but I just thought I'd let you know that boxing does bring people together and uh, if anybody's suffering from depression out there, well, there is light at end of the tunnel. Alright, peace out.